first Zoom call, and we will be having these every single week, Wednesday at 10 o'clock in the morning. I did want to put a little plug out there for you. We will have our congressman as our keynote speaker. Jeff, can you go ahead and jump in? Are you able to talk? Absolutely. Uh, okay. My name. When we get when we get Karen back on, we'll have her cover the things there. Perfect. Thanks. My name is Jeff Van Wagenen. I am the Assistant County Executive Officer for Public Safety. So uh, here's the case information as of yesterday at 1:30. Total number of deaths 28. In Corona, that's two. Total number recovered 67. Our confirmed case total as of yesterday at 1:30 was 1,016, 1016. By way of comparison, our projection for what today would have been was 1,024. We are trending ahead of our projections. Corona, the number of confirmed cases as of yesterday was 48. We have 129 people currently hospitalized. The projection for today was 152. The total number in ICU beds is 46. Our projection for today was 45. Here's the latest information. Our surge planning is almost complete. We anticipate a surge in the next seven to 10 days. The challenges remain the same, space, supplies, and staff. We are chasing ventilators, as is everybody else. We have some new wrinkles we're working through as a result of some federal and state action, but we're coordinating with our partners. I am continuing to try and fill resource requests from our hospital first responders and our other partners. I am getting a lot of what I call the I know a guy referrals, and we are chasing them down. Please keep them coming. Uh, for some of the less traditional vendors, we have the DA's office involved to assist us in vetting them. Our federal medical station has been stood up in Coachella Valley. That's 125 beds out at the fairgrounds, partially staffed with a CMAT team, California Medical Assistance Team. We're standing up 125 beds in West Western Riverside County. Our first site was not approved by the state. Our second site received tentative approval, or approval yesterday. We're moving forward. Our community testing continues in India, Lake Elsinore and Riverside. The National Guard is still deployed on two humanitarian missions. One is to uh, provide food at a food bank in Coachella Valley. The other is to support the FMS in India. They are not engaged in law enforcement activities. On Saturday, we issued a new order related to staying at home and also covering your face if you must leave the house. The goal of this order was to encourage voluntary compliance with the mitigation measures to flatten the curve. It is not martial law. All of law enforcement in the county has come down and explained how they will be enforcing that uh, action. Rumor control, as always, if you have a doubt, please reach out. You can email me at uh, DOC, liaison officer, at rivco.org. You can also call me at 951-955-3400, and I'll make sure Desiree has that information to send out. Essential County Services are continuing on behalf of our residents, and as Supervisor Spiegel said, our website is a treasure trove is a treasure trove of resources, and that's www.rivcoph.org slash coronavirus. That is the end of the report from the county. Thank you, Karen. Would you like to go ahead and then Don, will you do the welcoming? Evidently experiencing difficulty there. I'm gonna turn it over to my chairman of the board for the opening comments and I apologize. I'm just trying to be respectful of everyone's time on this call. Don Williamson, please. I wanna thank everybody for being on the call with us today. Especially those of you that are going to be uh, presenting to us today. This call is very important right now uh, when we're uh, Having times like this, uh, we have a lot of communications. We truly, especially appreciate Congressman Calvert for taking his time to be uh, here on the phone call with us today because we know how busy he is. A uh, couple things. Uh, we have a group here that's associated now with the Corona Chamber Foundation, which uh, last night raised enough money to supply a meal for the uh, workers at the hospital here in Corona. Uh, and if you would like to participate in that effort, uh, a, a woman named Mary Barnett is heading that up. And uh, if you go on our website, the Corona Chamber of Commerce, you'll see a link where you can donate to that effort. Uh, we like to show our appreciation for those that are risking their lives to take care of all of us. So uh, that's something you might want to consider. Also, uh, we have some information regarding a bill uh, that uh, state, a state bill that would uh, uh, tax businesses for the number of employees that they have, $150 a head, uh, that would go into a uh, uh, a fund for low-income housing. So anyway, those are uh, two things that I just want to bring to your attention right now. Uh, and I want to give uh, our uh, 
Riverside County Supervisor Karen Spiegel another shot if she's on the call. Failing that, uh, I'd like to turn it over to Judy Carpenter from the Riverside Medical Clinic. Good morning. Um, we're con uh, all of our sites are, have continued to be open. Uh, we are encouraging telemedicine visits um, for for most things, um, but however, we are still open. We are doing drive-through testing. Um, today's one of our testing uh, days on Brockton. As we get busier, if we need to expand the drive-through testing, our next location will be the Temesco Valley site. Um, we have also implemented uh, or set up tents uh, that we will be starting to see all the um, sick patients rather than bringing anyone that might be suspect for COVID into our clinics. Right now, that's at our Brockton location in Riverside. If we need a second tent, that will go to Temesco Valley as well. Uh, we're, all the healthcare providers are working closely together. I've um, spoken with Mark or via text this morning. Um, they're doing well. Um, right now, they still have enough resources uh, available to meet, to meet the current demand. We're all worried about what's going to happen the balance of the next few weeks. Um, but again, all working together. So um, I don't know if anyone has questions. But... We'll actually ask the questions at the end, but Judy, thank okay. you. So, uh, can you stay on through the call? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. Evidently, we've got muted. Uh, we've got a challenge on the mute, and I apologize to Karen. Uh, Desiree, can you unmute all of them? And Karen, can you uh, go ahead and give your talk? My apologies. Can you hear me now? Excellent. Yes. I so apologize. <laughs> well, <Very trauma>. fortunately, <laughs> no, yeah, you are. Fortunately, um, Jeff Van Wagen shared uh, bo bo basically what I would like to share. Again, ask if you don't know, reach out to either Jeff or myself. There's a great article of the uh, uh, ninth, uh, the most frequently questions asked questions for COVID-19 on our website. It's updated regularly when there's changes. It answers almost all your questions about the different orders, about you know what's a essential business, what's essential needs, what can I do, what you know, all that information. Please go look at that, research it. Also, Rob Moran with EDA at Rivco BizHelp.org is a great resource. Please fill your toolbox with the information that you need. We want you to be successful. We're in this together and we'll come out together. Have a great day. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, thank you. Now we'd like to turn the time over to uh, the mayor of Corona, uh, Mayor Jim Steiner. Well, good morning, everyone. I hope uh, you and your families remain healthy. I'd like to touch on just a couple of items before I turn it over to our Corona Fire Chief, Brian Young. City Hall operations, including plan check services, are up and running. If anyone's having any uh, difficulties with that or uh, they need to make contact, you can contact uh, Brian Cortez directly. Ryan is our Economic Development Coordinator. He's on this call, too, if you have any uh, specific questions. Uh, the city is working to disseminate uh, disaster loan information in Spanish. We are pushing for businesses to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program. This is a loan intended for businesses to specifically cover payroll expenses over this period with uh, eligibility for the loan to be forgiven. The goal being to reduce the amount of furloughs. This is federally funded, but applications must, directly, must be directly through the private lenders such as banks and credit unions. As a side note, uh, many of the larger banks are saying that um, they reach capacity on the first day. Uh, Brian Cortez will be working tomorrow on a list of all the lenders who are still taking applications. Right now, there is unanimous consensus across the region that the best way we can support business is to continue to disseminate information and connect businesses to those uh, who assist with the application process. We are continuing to update our essential services GIS map daily. Um, however, we continue to see businesses closing down either uh, in an effort to protect their employees or they're just there just isn't enough business for them. So with that, uh, I'd like to introduce Chief Young, who is serving as our emergency services director and um, also um, overseeing the COVID-19 response. Yeah. Program. Sorry, yeah. Go ahead, Chief. Well, thanks a lot, Mayor Steiner. Um, just to, to echo what he had already mentioned, 
Um, I'm currently uh, serving the role as emergency services director for, uh, for the city uh, emergency operations center. So just to give you a point of reference is it, it's, it's a city level um, uh, copy basically of what's happening at the county level. So we'd, we'd heard um, um, both Supervisor Spiegel as well as, uh, as Jeff speak. We're doing the same thing here at a city level. So we're meeting the needs of our constituents and the citizens we're serving. So, so they have the Emergency Operations Center uh, running it uh, through EMD um, at the county level. And, and we're basically doing the same thing at a granular level here in the county, or excuse me, in the city of Corona. It's important to really understand just as a quick snapshot of what that really means. So you hear this terminology of an EOC and what, is, what does that entail? Well, really what it is, it's the strategic planning and control uh, perspective so that the city's operations continue. We have a continuity of operations. Important thing to note is we're incredibly proactive in the city of Corona. We've been stood up for over two weeks um, getting ready for the, the impending surge that, that we have reason to believe is gonna occur in coming days. So um, all of those background um, support functions have been stood up and they're being um, carried out. Some of the key ones that I think are important to note is obviously our emergency, uh, emergency manager, Gina McGough, has an important role from the command staff perspective as well as from a PIO uh, perspective. You heard Supervisor Spiegel talk about the messaging and sources of information at the county level and we're doing the exact same thing here in the city. We have a 24-7 information line, we have a 24-7 email line, and the text, uh, text line will be launching later today. Um, over 400 uh, information um, notifications have gone out since the situation started, including videos, as well as quick links, frequently asked questions, and, and really things focused on, on the city of Corona and how we can best serve the um, population. And then after you look at the- Hey, Mike. Go ahead, Chief. Um, another important role that was stood up uh, last week as, as the EOC evolved was, as mentioned, Ryan Cortez, uh, with his background in economic development, uh, was perfectly aligned to fill in the liaison role. The liaison officer under the command staff really ties all those uh, stakeholders together and make sure that we're not leaving any uh, key constituents out. And then lastly, just give you a good understanding of what the rest of the structure is in the EOC is, is four primary general staff components. And, and they're, they're self-evident with their titles, but I think it will help everybody understand. Um, the operations section deals with specific operations throughout throughout the city uh, and also includes things like care and shelter and and um, as well as supply chains um, but but more importantly I think is is those core functions of the DWP services uh, police and fire and then the last three components are the planning uh, planning section um, um, logistics and finance so so just to hear the, a brief snapshot as far as how the EOC runs what we've been doing um, really provides um, I think um, the best direction forward for us as a city from a strategic perspective to support everybody, whether it be um, the citizens at the highest risk population to our business community. Um, end of report. Thank you, uh, Chief, and thank you, Mayor. Uh, at this time now, we would uh, like to uh, turn the time over to our Congressman, Congressman Ken Calvert. Well, thank you, and good morning. It's uh, obviously been quite a, a challenge for all of us uh, this last number of weeks, and it'll be a challenge for us in the next couple of weeks uh, as we uh, as we approach the the peak of this and uh, and hopefully we can see the other side and uh, our way out of this and uh, get back to uh, to normal uh, but uh, these are unprecedented actions that uh, that we're taking on uh, congress has passed uh, a number of bills uh, we have uh, put up a lot of money uh, a significant amount of money the cares act $2.2 trillion. The mayor mentioned uh, part of that uh, is, uh, uh, is the Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, we're going to add more money to that this week, another $250 billion, and may, may as soon as it's today. Um, we have certain banks that, uh, that are more reluctant than others, and if, if there is a problem with a bank, uh, please call uh, my office and let me know, uh, or go to my website, www.calvert.com. Dot house dot gov, and you can go to my COVID pay, uh, site, which which we update daily. But I'd like to hear about the banks that are uh, resisting. Uh, those of you who have a banking relationship prior to February 15th with a particular bank or credit union uh, uh, should uh, should not have a problem in uh, w working with those banks or credit unions and working through this process. 
uh, we've had complaints about, for instance, Wells Fargo. Last few days, the uh, Fed today uh, released uh, some or gave some relief to Wells Fargo uh, for they can continue to lend into that program. So some of you have, have heard from uh, that we're having some difficulties. Uh, that, that should be uh, relieved, and they should be more helpful than they have been uh, the last few days. Uh, but um, small business owners, uh, you know, I, I was one. I know it's a challenge. Keep your lights on, your doors open, but uh, this this PPP plan should be helpful to pay your people and to pay your rent or your mortgage. Um, and if you do that, uh, this loan will be forgiven. So uh, I encourage all of you to do that, uh, that are on the phone. That, uh, uh, that And if you need some help, just call my office and we'll do the best we can. But your bank should be prepared for this. I've been calling, I've been talking to a number of them. And um, they're doing they're doing the best they can. Uh, we've gone through an economic shock. Um, that's why we put up this money to kind of buffer this. And we're going to probably do some more as the time goes on. Uh, but um, we'll do what we have to do to get this economy back on track. In spite of the amount of money we're spending going into a recession or worse, would cost significantly more. And so uh, we want to make sure that we have what we call a V-type recovery as quickly as we possibly can. So uh, thank you for having us call. And if there's any questions, I'll be more, try to more happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Donnie, did you want to say anything real quick or? No, no. We're okay. Good. So what I'd like to do at this point is just ask if there's people that have questions uh, for any of the people, I'd like for you to identify yourself. Uh, we do have a little challenge we're experiencing with the microphone. So everyone's unmuted. Um, so I'd like you to identify yourself and then ask who you want, who the question is for. So um, is there anyone that would like to? And Desiree, can you look at the chat line and see if there's any that are in the chat that want to this ask? This is Mike Karaki, Bobby. I have a, just a comment to make. Yes, Mike. This is for uh, the Mayor Jim Steiner. I just wanted to share and tell him thank you. We had a non-medical emergency last night and I bothered him quite late and he came through and helped us out. Thank you very much, Jim. Glad it worked out, brother. Yes, sir. Congressman, while we're waiting for another question, I'd like to just ask in the next relief thing is the 501c6s, which the Chamber of Commerce falls under, will those be part of the PPP packaging? Uh, uh, there, was, there was certainly an intent to do that, so I, I, we'll, we'll be cleaning up these, this bill as we move along. So hopefully, uh, yes. So I'll, that would be I'll keep track. Most helpful. It. Thank you so much, Ken. Is there any other questions that we have? Everyone's kind of quiet today, and I don't know if they're getting used to the uh, COVID or whatever. The other thing on a, you know, I, I'd like to get some relief for our city of Corona and any business named Corona because they've called this virus what it is. Um, and I'm somewhat joking, but somewhat, you know, serious on trying to come up with a positive campaign that we can spin this. Since the turn of the century, we've been the lemon capital of the world. We've taken lemons and made lemonade out of them every single day. And that's what we need to do with this when it's all said and done. Uh, we, we should be able to capitalize on that everyone in the world knows the town of Corona, uh, but they don't know what our town is capable of. And... Um, this Monday, we're going we're gonna to feature uh, Chad Miller, who's an entrepreneur, who's turned his entire operation on over into making masks for the COVID. Um, there are companies in our town that are absolutely reinventing themselves. And that's what's special about our town, as well as other uh, communities that have manufacturers. Are there any other questions or any comments that anyone would like to make at this point in time? I have a question, Bobby. Yes, go ahead, please. So um, we are open. We are one of the essential services and, and trying to do our best to keep everyone safe. Um, I want to make sure that if anyone is in need of cones or last minute signs or sign shops open so we can help you in those areas. But also my employees have their fears and some of them have been coming to me saying that I have to provide home, you know, or uh, commuting, telecommuting, rather than them actually coming into the office. And there's just been different rumors how people 
interpret what they want. And I was asking the last day or two, are there some pretty good guidelines for business owners, what they are required to do with employees and not at this time? So let's see if Jeff, Jeff or perhaps um, Congressman. Well, I can, I can add into this a little bit. Uh, the state obviously dictated what are essential businesses and the guidelines. The counties also have their own regulatory structure and, and maybe Jeff might want to comment on that. Uh, but the, the primary thing um, that, that uh, we need to do is, is to look at the state and local guidelines. Uh, you can go to my website, which we try to keep updated with all information as possible. But, uh, and, this, and to find out uh, what your requirements are within the, uh, within the county and within the state. In our system, the state primarily is responsible for implementing uh, the uh, regulatory and uh, structure that we're, we're operating under to today until we can get this uh, under control. I will say, by the way, that the models are improving. And um, I put a little hope out there that, that uh, we're seeing uh, some significant improvement in parts of the country and uh, hopefully we can we're seeing some light here at the end of the tunnel so we get back to some kind of normalcy so. excellent thank you congressman can you hear me yes go ahead supervisor as i had mentioned earlier elaine there is a on the website for the county uh i think it's like 21 or 22 pages of a lot of that information that you're seeking. Uh, it gives you direction of what's considered essential business, what's you know not, what's a considered essential transportation, where you're going. So I would go to that first. I'm trying to look through my notes and of it. I can't quite read fast enough to tell you it's in there, um, but I'll certainly look and get back to you. I'm not aware. We just encourage businesses to do as much telecommuting as possible. There are some businesses that just cannot telecommute and you have to have bodies. So there, is, I don't believe there is any black and white rule that says we have to do this for the employees uh, because you have a business to run and that's gotta be. Uh, this is Jeff, um, this is Jeff Gibson, the, 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 uh, the state uh, standards for that are, are Elaine are listed at cisa.gov. Jeff, if you would forward that to me, we'll forward it out to our entire group. Also, also if I can. Go ahead, Eugene. There was the email that went out, and I believe you sent it out too, Bobby, on the family leave uh, that came out early on. That yes. does have some pretty high expectations of businesses. And I believe the threshold was 50 employees or less and 50 employees or more. So, so yeah, but you know, the, the qualification that I have challenges on, Elaine has more than 50 employees, but they're out on construction sites. Yeah, right. Speci about specifically the, for Elaine, specifically for you, because you're in the construction industry, that is essential. That's, that's classified by every level of government as essential. So your operations can continue pretty much uh, obviously within the guidelines of social distancing, et cetera, but, but the construction is continuing. No, but I think her question was more if an employee wanted to work from home and they, in her work, probably most of them can't work from home. So right. that's, that's the question. And so um, that would fall more into the family leave part of it. And, um, you know, if, if you had to lay them off because they are unable to do their job because you need them in a certain spot to do their job, then that requires you to either lay them off and then they would fall under the family leave auspices. Um, or, you know, I don't know what the other I, I Yeah, I, we understand. I've gone through this for other clients, Elaine, in, in, in the construction industry and they are required to to come to come to work it's it's at the it's at cisa.gov you still have to follow the social distancing you still have to follow if there's a mask order 
if you have to do any of those items. But if they can't. Okay. Then, All right, I'll look yeah, that side up. That go forward. Okay. That's perfect. It's right there on the front page. CISA.gov. Thank you. Thank very you, Jeff. Much. That's exactly Probably what we want Mike to do Flossy. on these calls. But, go ahead. And for, but Eugene, just quickly, my understanding is outside, because I have worked pretty specifically with the state on this, if, if they, it, in another case, what you're describing is exactly, exactly it. If they, you have to go through a layoff process. And, so and, through, through and that the other thing, yeah, and the other thing I would be careful of for all employers is if somebody is feeling uncomfortable coming in and you're making them come in, I think we're going to see a lot of issues after this is over. And so, HR I would, nightmare. Yeah, I don't really want to get into details on an open call, but, but I, I think there will be a lot of details. And I think Bobby, uh, Simon was going to reach out to you, and he was going to talk about some of the SBA uh, loan stuff. He's a local business attorney, um, and he might be willing. Uh, he's doing a call on Friday, Elaine, talking more about the SBA stuff. But he has made himself available for answering legal questions and uh, you know over the phone or by email so um, and he's not charging for that at least for simple you know questions simple like that but he, right. he, he, wants, he wants to do a call like this for the chamber as well so that may be in the okay. next so. Bobby one last uh, point I would like to make uh, my that's when there isn't a Whoever else is talking, yeah. if you could mute your phone. Did they say anything of important? Yeah, Bobby. This is Michael. I just wanted to remind you that we are also under essential businesses, and we are offering uh, people who are open or closed uh, disinfecting services to all our businesses locally in Corona. And also, if anybody has a uh, challenge getting some toilet paper, paper towels, they can call us directly and we may be able to order some for them for my resources. Very kind, Mike. We'll go ahead and have that on. If you send that on over to uh, Desiree, we can put that on our um, updates and stuff. So that, that will be oh, very helpful. I and any of the businesses, Thank you. you know, you have an opportunity to work on your back office uh -huh. on, on the website. So you can put uh -huh. these different specials that you've got under hot deals. Um, is, and yeah. we recommend that you do that. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion or any other comments that need to be brought up right now? Again, I want to thank everyone for being on this call. The last week's call has been uh, recorded and sent out to all of you. This one will be uh, um, sent out to you as well. And we look forward to having everyone on at 10 o'clock next Wednesday, April 15th, tax day, um, so that we will go ahead and have another call in. Thank you all for being on this call. Maybe the third also, so. Oh, Congressman Calvert, what was that? Uh, some folks, uh, that may be deferred. So uh, I think you need to file, but as far as the payment, uh, some uh, uh, folks may be able to defer that payment. So we're trying to, be as accommodating as possible. Awesome. Thank you so much. And Congressman, on behalf of the Corona Chamber, we, we so appreciate you. I know you're a past uh, chairman of the board for this organization. You're a business owner. You know what it is to have to pay the electric bill, the gas bill, everything else, employees. And so you get it. You represent us very well back there in Washington. And I just want to say on behalf of our membership, we, we thank you and applaud you for the efforts that you continually look forward to look for our business community and the community of Corona and greater area. Thank you so much, sir. Happy to do it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. For those that are celebrating Passover, please enjoy Passover tonight. It starts. And for those that are celebrating Easter, please have a blessed Easter and enjoy the week. Thank you. This call is officially over. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you.